super, you know, central to the kind of guts of the mid-century um, art that was going on in our country. And, and there's a beautiful exhibit of her and Paul Clay's work at SF MoMA right now that I just saw a couple weeks ago, just about lying. I don't think they had any relationship, but their work actually communicates. And I, I just want to say that I, I know you're in the museum, Jeff, is so involved with education. I would, I would love to someday explore how some of this public work can can overflow to education and connection. You know, this is a you, if, if we're able to pull this off, I would I'd hate to see it just sort of sit and get a patina on it in the corner of the courthouse square and not have her life and legacy kind of thrown forward. So I'd always be interested in working on something like that. So just want to say that. Great, thanks, Anne. I would also like to say it, um, it's a great opportunity to be considering and talking about this project again uh, as we have, or as we're moving forward with the Imagine Art and Courthouse Square piece. I really think that these two pieces will speak to each other and, and um, highlight the uh, the words and intentions uh, for, for providing unity in our community and then to also celebrate where we've been and what industries and what events have, have shaped our community. And um, I'm, I'm excited to see both of these pieces move forward. Melanie, please. Um, so the fountain that these pieces are supposed to go on, do we know any more about that? So as I understand it, the designs and all the construction drawings are waiting to go to the city for approval, but um, the Hugh Futrell Corporation wanted to make sure that we had confirmed what panels were actually going back on the fountain first to make sure that uh, the engineering is correct for the actual panels themselves. So obviously bronze is a different weight than the concrete panels. They may need to be attached slightly differently. So we wanted to confirm those details before moving forward with the um, with the fountain construction, but um, I believe they are ready to go as soon as we are, so to speak. So we're working oh. very closely to make sure we can move that forward. Great. And do you have um, a estimate of a timeline for? <laughs> I don't, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I would. I can. I can try to find out, but I, it's kind of been a moving target as we've mm -hmm. as we as we've gone through all the different steps of this process. So I can. I can try to get an answer for the next time I I meet with the committee. Will this committee have an opportunity to see the fountain design before it gets approved, or, or sorry, before it is discussed? No. Um, could you let us know which body is? the group? No, no one. It's not a city project, so it doesn't need any city approvals other than an encroachment with building review. And so, um, because it's being done privately. And so it's the original design that the original architects for Courthouse Square who did the master plan, it's their original design that was intended all along. Um, but it, it it is not at a point where there will be any uh, city board or committee or council review of that. It's all, it's, all, it's from 2016, so it's all been done prior. Okay. Good for our committee to understand the process and the players. <laughs> uh, at this time, I'd like to ask our recording secretary to take a roll call vote for our motion to approve the installation of the bronze cast on the fountain in Courthouse Square. Uh, Chair Kiefer? Aye. Vice Chair Jones Carter. Aye. Member as sorry, Member Asgarian. Aye. Member Baumgartner. Aye. Member Nathanson. Aye. Wonderful. The item moves forward as uh, as discussed. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Next, I'd like to move on to item 5.4. We have project updates where staff will present updates on current projects. Oops, I muted myself. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, I just have some brief updates. 
for a couple of our ongoing projects. Let me pull up my notes here. So for the Imagine Art in Courthouse Square project, uh, the community engagement process to collect the text for Blessing Hancock's piece finally launched in July after working with our advisory committee on the type of language we wanted to use for asking the question um, for the committee, for the community to respond to. So hopefully you've seen some of that outreach we've done. Um, we've included it in some city emails, our social media, there are flyers and posters around town. We are working with um, summer camps. We've created a separate kind of youth engagement type flyer that we've distributed to summer camps um, and, and other methods. Uh, there's just been a lot going on. The artist and her team um, are working with the Office of Community Engagement to do some targeted outreach to community and neighborhood groups to invite participation that represents the diversity of our city. Uh, one way to participate, which is encouraged for committee members as well, is to go online and take the survey, which is at srcity.org slash imagineart. Currently, we have approximately 200 responses to the survey. Um, we anticipate keeping this campaign open for another few weeks, especially um, given the, all of the different methods of outreach we're doing. Some of the information will be collected um, kind of in hard copy. So there won't, you know, the survey responses will be compiled with the responses we receive in the other formats that we're doing the outreach in. So uh, as I said, we anticipate keeping this open for a few more weeks and then reconvening the advisory committee to come up with a draft list of words and phrases to be recommended to the Art and Public Places Committee for approval. So you'll see an item coming to the committee with that recommendation at some point in the near future. Uh, for the 5th Street Parking Garage project, the three finalist designs are available to view um, online at srcity.org slash 5th Street Garage Art, and you can click on the link to take the art survey. Um, so we're doing similar kind of outreach for that, uh, and as of today, we've received a whopping 2,300 responses to our survey. Um, so people are really loving that one, and... Um, they essentially are ask, uh, answering questions about the three proposals in terms of how well they meet the goals of the project. And the survey responses will be considered by the selection panel when identifying the artist to recommend to the Art and Public Places Committee for approval. So just to refresh your memory, the finalists uh, are L Street Art. She does, did the flower design. The team, uh, artist team of MJ, Lindo Lawyer and Joshua Lawyer that is the design with the girl with the watering can. And then Matthew Floriani is the dragon design. Um, we'll probably be wrapping up that survey in another week or so, so that the selection process can continue. And again, we hope to bring that recommendation to our public places committee for approval soon. We may be calling a special APPC meeting sometime between now and um, our next regular meeting, which would not be till October because of the Labor Day holiday. So um, look for some invitations for a special meeting at some point because we have some important items to, to bring forward to you. Uh, for maintenance and conservation related issues, unfortunately, ZAG, the light piece on the pedestrian bridge over the San Rosa Creek by Michael Hayden was vandalized. Um, someone has actually cut the cables that connect the LED light strips um, and so right now we're working with the conservator and the artist and his fabricator on a more vandal proof way to install the piece to the bridge. Um, his method he thought was um, vandal proof, but now we, we see that it's not. So we are going to take another stab at it working with our, um, the conservator, conservator we have uh, for our other collection needs, um, that's preservation arts. Um, and so we're actually looking at designing a a, um, a metal channel essentially that would hide all cabling underneath it. So there would be no exposed wires or, or, or cables to be cut um, and then attaching that to the bridge. So anyway, we're working on that right now. Um, we may need to identify additional funds for some of the repairs for that piece. It may go over and above what our annual maintenance um, can handle. 
um, but we'll, but I will bring that item back to the committee for future discussion. Right now, that's just the update on the situation. So happy to answer any questions about those updates. Thank you, Tara, for the updates. Um, these are all projects. Sorry, these are all projects part of our public art um, collection that are commemorated, or sorry, they are part of our, uh, the, the interactive map, uh, not the new ones, not the Fifth Street Garage yet, but, and, and Imagine Art and Courthouse Square, but the Zag piece is part of our uh, walking tour of public art pieces. Is that correct? No, it's actually not on our current map because it was put in after the map was completed. We have not updated the map since 2016, I believe. Okay. Great, do any committee members have any questions about our project updates? Seeing none, thanks Tara. Uh, I will move on to item number six, or sorry, committee reports. Uh, 6.1, our ad hoc task force reports and discussion. Uh, report out from Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Access Task Force, Community Engagement Task Force, and Project Development Task Force. Uh, can I get one of the members who's part of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Access to uh, give us a brief update? Hello. Um, we are taking meetings with different people. It's been... Um, we're meeting with Kristen Madsen this week from Creative Sonoma. Some of these have taken like over a, over a couple months to schedule. I don't know if you guys are finding that with outside groups just over summer, it's been slow, but we've had some emails, but we're actually gonna have lunch with her. We had a great, um, I'm spacing on her name, Tara, maybe you can help me, the diversity officer, the new the new staff. Yeah, that's, um, we met with Socorro Shields. Yes, we yeah. had a great meeting with her, um, just kind of, deep thinking and kind of getting into her head about just how we move forward and think about ourselves as a diverse um, city and how we can tap into that and think about it. She had all, you know, every level of questions for us, like who we all are and what kinds of um, places we're going. And so it was good. And we're going, we're trying to get together with the, the, the gal from the Sonoma Monarch Project who's in Armenia this summer. So that'll happen in September. And we're just continuing just to put feelers out. Um, I know Lisa had a meeting last week with someone I couldn't connect with them. But so it's just been a piece by piece talking, we're, we're in contact. It's, it's relational right now. So that's about what I have to say. Anyway. Great, thank you. Uh, next, can I get someone to report out on our community engagement task force? Sure, I'll start and I think Jeff is uh, gonna chime in. Um, so we, we do have a question um, on, our, this, on our plan. Are we looking at Santa Rosa specifically or our county? Santa Rosa. Just Santa Rosa. Yes, I mean, we're the city of Santa Rosa. So our purview is contained to the city of Santa Rosa. I think understanding the wider context of Sonoma County may be helpful in some of your conversations or you're thinking about the subject, but in terms of making recommendations for policy changes or for um, programs or projects or anything like that um, would be limited to the city of Santa Rosa. That's our jurisdiction. So our community engagement is limited to Santa Rosa. That's our question. Well, so when so, I think of when I think of community engagement, it's you know our surrounding areas, but like you know Sonoma State University. Yeah. Is, so I mean, we yeah we include um, lots of other parts of surrounding community members when mm -hmm. we do certain things. I think it depends on what how you're interacting with them. Mm -hmm. um, like I said ultimately recommendations 
that go into effect affect Santa Rosa residents or the Santa Rosa Public Art Program. And so getting their input or, or you know, doing the community engagement with the folks that are directly impacted by the work that we're doing, I think is probably a higher priority, but that doesn't mean that you can't go outside to get different perspectives or um, you know, subject matter experts or um, you know, there's, a, there's a variety of resources uh, available to us that come from everywhere, right? Not just mm -hmm. here in Santa Rosa. So it's not limiting yourself in terms of information gathering or resources or connections that would help in the process. I think it's just keeping on the front of your mind what impacts are going to come from this work and who will be impacted. And that's Santa Rosa, right? Okay, yeah. perfect. So we started doing our, uh, our list um, of who we should be reaching out to. And that was one of the questions that we had in our discussion. Um, we have yet to meet with Tara, so we're, we're way behind. And, um, um, but we do have a, a starting point of just brainstorming groups that we think we need to connect with and who those people are. Um, I think we probably have like 50 on the list, I think so far, so. That's it for me. Yeah, actually, I'll just um, also jump in and uh, as was reported um, previously, um, our museum also has a community engagement um, uh, committee working um, to try to really uh, increase our level of community engagement. And so Melanie did uh, attend um, one meeting of our committee and we are, uh, and, and working with us on our committee is Magali Teyes, uh, who's um, the dire director of community engagement for the city. So um, we're, we're just going to be exploring uh, the, the best ways to connect with various groups in the community and to um, uh, make sure that we are opening dialogues with as many um, different organizations and, and, and neighborhoods as we can. But we also don't want to duplicate efforts that might be happening with um, city community engagement or with the museum, we, we see a, a, a great deal of value in trying to coordinate our efforts. So that will be um, part of our strategy moving forward. Also, Jeff is on the um, Courthouse Square community engagement group. Right. And so we were gonna try and uh, see where we could um, tap into some of the resources that are developed from that project so that um, it's a good way to reach out to people initially of this is what we're doing. We want to get your input and um, see if we can also um, incorporate their strategies as well. Right, with the idea that um, the the UNAM project on Courthouse Square might be the thing that um, provides introductions, sort of opens the door to a dialogue. And then um, we see our, our challenge as keeping that dialogue open and, and expanding the dialogue as we go into the future. I think that's about it, right, Melanie? I think so. Yeah. Great, thank you guys. Nathan, was there anything you would like to pop in about project development? I can give a quick update as well. Um, sure. Uh, ben Kinmont has been sort of on standby with uh, a public presentation on the history of socially engaged art practices. Um, so we're waiting to hear back about uh, the site. Uh, which will either be in city council chambers or in courthouse square. Um, so we just need to hear about AV and set a date and he's ready to go. Um, I've been in discussions with the video artist, Courtney Stevens about producing a 16 millimeter film about the history of Santa Rosa city hall. 
Um, so I'm working on a uh, kind of a PDF uh, so that she has all the relevant information to move forward with that. And I would like to initiate some kind of discussions about potential funding sources for that project or if anyone's interested. Um, this last month, uh, there were two exhibitions at Escalar, which is the project space that I run, um, which is sort of tangential in a way, um, but those were uh, Steve Cato's video on the history of um, sort of urban oil well camouflage in Los Angeles and a exhibition by the Philadelphia artist, based artist Aaron Gemmel, um, uh, sort of about algorithms in urban space. Um, on August 21st, Meredith Hildebrand's exhibition, uh, Horizontal Window will open there. And in um, September, early September, uh, we'll be going to Los Angeles for alternative art spaces fair uh, with a number of different Sonoma County artists uh, who I, I could list somewhere else. Um, I'm, it seems like the list that we initiated with the planning committee has needs, needs some attention. Um, Great, thanks for bringing I, that up. Guys and, you know, kind of go over that. I, there were a number of things that got bullet points that went into that and um, there hasn't been a lot of follow-ups. So I think it might be good to get together and, you know, kind of see how we can get that rolling again. And uh, I, that's all I can think of right now. Great. Along with Project Development Task Force on my end, I've been uh, coordinating with the city regarding the general plan update. They've still been in their visioning phase, but providing input on the arts and culture subsection of the plan uh, and relating that uh, if there isn't to be a new chapter specifically, what elements should be retained and input into other sections of the plan as well. So focusing on the general plan, uh, there's also the South of A Street master plan, uh, I've had a few conversations with uh, planning about um, making sure that opportunities for art are layered into that plan. Um, so I'm really seeing that as the uh, opportunity with our with our task force at this point. But um, it's a it's a moving target, and we should uh, adopt more. Um, or, or it, it keeps evolving. Is my point, and and I think we're making some good connections and, and headway. So we'll keep at it. Uh, great, thank you guys. Uh, next item on the agenda, our future agenda items. This is a schedule, sorry, this schedule is tentative and subject to change pending final publication of the meeting agenda. But this time is reserved for discussion whether to place matters on future agenda for future discussion. Um, uh, on item 7.1, we have an ongoing list that is private art, or sorry, public art and private development report. This would be reporting out on all of the projects that are in the process with the City of Santa Rosa Planning and Economic Development Division that uh, qualify for the Percent for Art project. Um, a number of them will elect to pay into an in lieu fee, but we're looking for a report out about the projects that will be providing artwork on site. Um, and Tara, am I right in that this is going to be an upcoming item on a future agenda? Yes, so that one I know was requested a couple months ago and we've just had some really full agendas, so I keep pushing it back, but um, the intention is to have it on our next regular meeting agenda. Um, and I will provide an update on all of the private um, private projects. So public art and private development projects over the last, I think it's about a two year period since I last reported out to the committee on um, the projects that have either placed artwork on site or paid the in lieu fee. So that's what that report 
will be about. All the other items on that upcoming list are things that were brainstormed um, at our last meeting under this agenda item. And really the intention is to just keep a running list so that we are aware of the types of um, ideas that are being generated. And then um, as we revisit this list each meeting, we can add to it, we can, um, uh, there, there can be interest from the committee members uh, to elevate uh, one of the items to actually put it on the agenda for a full discussion. So that, that's kind of what that list is, for, is meant for. Great. Melanie. So as you know, I'm a strong proponent for uh, youth representation on the Art and Public Places Committee. So if we could um, find some time to talk about that, or if other people are not interested or feel like it's a valid discussion that we should have, I'd like to have some dialogue about that. Great. Uh, I, I've reached out to a couple people, but I'm having a hard time getting traction with that. I think it's a great idea. Um, so I don't, that's <laughs> where I'm at with it. Um, but I support, you know, finding ways to make that happen. Yeah. Great. So if we have ideas surrounding this, I think we could um, put it on a future agenda item to talk about it. And then we can make a plan going forward from there. Sounds great. Jeff, please go ahead. Um, I would also be in favor of um, putting that um, on, on the agenda for a more in-depth discussion and would um, like to suggest we perhaps uh, invite a guest from Art Start um, to perhaps have that dialogue or another option would be um, for the community and gave, Melanie, uh, you'll have to forgive me for volunteering us to do something, but for the community engagement task force to actually have a conversation with Jennifer and maybe some of the um, uh, Art Start um, participating youth to try to get um, maybe just a, an idea of what the, um, what the interest level might be from youth about being part of this process rather than just being, you know, I know sometimes artists just want to be artists. They just want to make the work and they don't want to be part of the, the, the larger planning. But um, I feel like we have to do a little bit of reconnaissance. So I just wonder if that would be an advisable thing to do, to perhaps have Melanie and me um, talk with, with Art Start. I would suggest uh, that um, the item that we could first approach as a committee would be a discussion about, um, I, I could do the information gathering on what the process would be in terms of making sure that we can include mm -hmm. or invite a youth representative and what their position would be on this board. Um, so, so I would recommend that I gather that information, present back the information to the committee, and then the item could be open to discussion about how we proceed from there, given the information that I find out, um, and then talking about, you know, how, how that person is identified and selected. And um, I, I think that that, that in, in order to get get the proper, you know, not to, not to step down the wrong path without knowing that information, I suggest we do it in that order. Sounds good. We don't want to put yeah, the cart that before the horse. Sense. Yeah, thank you. Looking at the item that we have in our ongoing list, the Creative Sonoma Art Strategy Update, uh, without wanting to assign uh, work to Anne, uh, just looking or remembering back to your report out for diversity, equity, inclusion, and access. Uh, you had said that you're trying to schedule a meeting with Kristen Madsen. Um, if that naturally uh, progresses into kind of just a conversation about strategy, um, Tara, do you think that's something that Anne could report out on or 
Um, I've already so invited Kristen to present um, when she's ready on the current state of the things they're working on, including their current strategic process. So uh, strategic planning process. So I, um, I think it'll probably uh, be a report out by her sometime on an upcoming agenda when she's ready. Yeah, and Great. I'll just share with you that um, I, I was actually a participant in one of their focus groups. So um, I have participated in their um, information gathering process. Great. I'm curious to hear more from Creative, Creative Sonoma when we have an update available for us. Are there so any I other items that we would like to put on the list? Yeah, I, I have an item because it keeps coming up uh, time and again over the last um, couple of years. Uh, there seem to be a number of people in the community very interested in either a recreation of the round barn or a memorial um, to the round barn as a symbol of um, uh, resilience and the and and the wildfires and, and doing something that would uh, commemorate um, loss, resilience, um, the, the spirit of the community, um, things of that nature. So I think it, I, I think it uh, really needs to be discussed um, by this committee so that we can um, understand what might be possible, what isn't possible, and to be able to um, respond to some of the people in the community who are really interested in this topic. Um, I, I, again, I would um, be happy to gather the most current information. I have heard that the county is interested in pursuing some kind of fire memorial of some kind. I'm not sure if the round barn is also included in, in their discussions at this point. And I know that Creative Sonoma was involved in that and Kristen was going to reach out to me when and if there was kind of a crossover opportunity or a collaboration opportunity. So I can follow up and bring back a report out on that on what I know currently um, before, before the committee um, kind of jumps in with brainstorming because I think that there is something that was potentially in the works. That'd be great, thank you. I think this is a strong list that we have going so far and we'll continue to refine that. And, uh, Tara, please remind us opportunity to, um, if, if something comes up at a later date, what is the best way to communicate uh, intentions that we might have and that we wanna discuss with the committee? You can email me directly and I will keep a running list and then I can um, include them uh, when we revisit this item the next time. So um, there isn't really a way to publicly share the information until we have a public meeting. But if you have ideas that you would like to send to me directly, I can, I can keep that list going. Great, that's great food for thought. And we'll chew on that <laughs> as we uh, enter into our, enter into August. <laughs> uh, great. Well, that wraps up our agenda for today. And I um, want to remind everyone that our next regular meeting for the Art and Public Places Committee that would be scheduled for Monday, September 6th is canceled due to the Labor Day holiday. Uh, we will stay tuned if there are uh, special meetings scheduled, but uh, at this date, um, enjoy August. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys later. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thanks, Closing everybody. See ya.